What's going on guys? Are you ready for today's free effortless phrasal verb component? Today we're going to be going over all the different ways that we can create phrasal verbs effortlessly using the particle out. Okay, so out. And I'll give you a quick, quick little example of what that is. I've got a jar here and I've got a lighter here. If I put the lighter in the jar, I do this and now it's in the jar, and if I take the lighter out of the jar, I do that. But before that, a few announcements, and I guess, how's it going guys? Make sure that you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay. I want to make sure that the sound's okay, and I have just realised this is why, this is why we practice beforehand and we have a bit of an intro. I've just realised that my mic isn't on, so there's going to be a lot of reverb in the sound that you can currently hear, okay? So that is why I always ask you to give me a thumbs up if the sound's okay, because it makes, it reminds me to check to see that I have my microphone on. And today was another example where Silly Pete forgot to put his microphone on. Okay, so give me a thumbs up again, guys. Can you hear the sound okay? I just plugged it in. Um, I just want to make sure that you can hear me okay. Give me a love heart. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear the sound all good. Eliana, how are you going? Lima, how are you? What's going on, Marcella? Rocio as well. All of the crew, the standard crew are here. How are you guys going? All good? You can hear me okay? Sweet. All right, awesome. Um, as usual, guys, we're going to go through some phrasal verbs for the Effortless Phrasal Verb course. We're up to oof, 13 different components now where I've gone through a whole bunch of different uh, particles or prepositions that you can use to add to verbs to create phrasal verbs spontaneously without having to think about it. It's effortless. That's the whole point of this course, guys. If you want to sign up for this course, you can do so by following the link in the description. It's only $97. You'll save $13 and you'll get, I don't know, probably about 10 hours worth of content already when you sign up, okay? And the whole point is to teach you to use phrasal verbs like a native. That is my mission with this course, guys. I know how difficult it is for you to learn phrasal verbs, to get the hang of phrasal verbs, to be able to use them without having to think and that is why I have designed this course the way that I have. Um, a few more announcements before we get into today's content. I'm sure that some of you will know, some of you may not though, um, that I've actually changed the website over. So the Aussie English Classroom, I've set this up now on a new domain, the Aussie English Classroom.com and I have the Aussie English Podcast on a separate domain, okay? Domain is the website that it's on. So I've split these two things. I've separated these two things out, okay? So that you've got the classroom separate from the podcast. Um, if you want to sign up, guys, I really recommend giving it a go. This, this classroom is really upgraded now. You get exercises. Um, you can enroll in the courses that I create for each of the expression episodes. I'm going to be uploading a lot of new content and you're going to be able to earn points to message people, to make groups, to discuss the episodes. Um, you'll get badges, so like little certificates for all of the different lessons and courses that you finish. And I'm probably, once it's designed, I'm probably gonna give away a free lesson every week, two weeks, or every month to the person at the top of the leaderboard on the course, on the on the website, okay? So I just, I want you to get in there, give it a go. Remember, if you, if you wanna give it a try, it's just $1 for the very first month. You've got nothing to lose. If you wanna cancel at the end of that period, it's fine. If you forget to cancel and you wanna cancel, I will always refund your money, guys. The main aim is for you to get in there, give it a go if it's something that you like and you think it's gonna help you upgrade your Aussie English, that's all I care about, okay? So please get in there and give it a go and give me some feedback, guys. Anyway, aside from that, I'm also collecting postcards still, guys. The postcard address is in the description. It's P.O. Box 597. 
uh, Ocean Grove, 3226 Victoria, Australia. I want to fill the whole wall with postcards, guys. That's the aim. Dad's going to drop some more off tomorrow because that's my parents' PO box, post office box. Um, and we're going to keep filling this up. So if you want to send me a postcard from wherever you are in the world, you could be in Iceland, Africa, Europe, wherever. You could be next door. Send me a postcard, okay? Anyway, I'm going to have a quick drink and then let's get into it. All right, all right. So welcome to today's effortless phrasal verb component, guys. This is component number 14, and today we're going to be covering phrasal verbs that go with the particle out, okay? So the lighter goes in the jar, and the lighter tips out of the jar, okay? In, out, in, out. That's the basic idea with out. As usual, it's got a few different meanings, okay? But they're, they're basically tied to this movement, okay? This movement. Number one, movement, as always, guys. So you go inside, you come outside. Um, you could walk out of a house, okay? You leave the house, you exit the house, you walk out of the house. Number two, expansion, guys, okay? Expansion, so to blow out to move out, to expand out, to move in, to move out. Same basic idea, except it's in a circular kind of motion like this, okay? It's the expansion there. Uh, number, two, number three, distribute. Same sort of thing with expansion. If I'm distributing, say, some leaflets, I'm handing the leaflets out. I'm giving the leaflets out, okay? So again, it's that expansion, distribution kind of movement, okay? Number four, to completely finish something. So everything could work out. It all worked out really well. It all finished really well. It all worked out really well. Number five, to say something publicly. So out loud, so that other people can see it. I'm not keeping it in, I'm speaking it out. Um, it's expanding, it's leaving me, it's not in me, it's outside of me, okay? So, for instance, I could shout out, Hey, how's it going? I'm shouting out. It's going away from me, it's expanding, shouting out. Um, number six, number six, to, to leave, okay? So, you could move out. Again, basically connected there with expansion. You're going from one location where you are in that location and then you're going out, you're moving outwards, you're leaving, you're moving out. Let's move out, guys. Okay, number seven is miscellaneous ones, and then we'll finish up with a whole bunch of expressions that go with phrasal verbs using out. Okay, so position of movement. Number one, out in this case is the opposite of in. In, out. In the jar, out of the jar, okay? So you could step out of the way. You're in the way. If someone was in front of me and I wanted them out of the way, they could step in front of me and I asked them to step out of the way. They could move in front of me and I asked them, move out of the way. They could run in front of me and I asked them to run out of the way. A bird could fly in front of me and I asked the bird to fly out of the way. Um, something could walk in front of me and I ask it, walk out of the way. You'll see what's happening there. I'm just saying, pick the verb that describes the way in which that thing is moving, flying, jumping, running, stepping, and then I pick the verb out to say away from me. So in towards me, out away from me, okay? We can also say things like you can see someone out. Someone's come over, they've entered your house, they've come into your house, they've come in and you want to see them out, as in you take them to the door. Thanks for coming around. Glad that you came into my house and I want to see you out of my house. You could show them out, okay? See them out, show them out. If you took them by the hand, you could take them out of the house. You could lead them out of the house. If it was your cat 
and it was scratching at the door, you know, meow, meow, meow. I want to go out. Um, you could open the door, you could pull the door in to let the cat out. Okay, the cat wants to go out, you're letting the cat, you're allowing the cat to go out, you're letting the cat out. Um, you could remove something, I'm trying to find a prop. If there was a picture inside of this piece of paper, okay, so it's in the piece of paper, and I use some scissors to cut around the picture and take the picture out of the paper, I've cut the picture out. If I ripped to take it out of the piece of paper, I'm ripping it out. You'll often hear that with newspapers, magazines, and books. So I could rip a page out of a book. I could tear a page out of a book. It's just the verb you want to use and then out as in away from. You know, it's in the thing and then it's out of the thing. All right. If we wanted to eat dinner at home, in our houses, that's eating in. And if we wanted to eat our dinner out of our houses, we can eat out, right? So you can eat in, you can eat out. If it was my girlfriend, she wanted to eat out, I might take my girlfriend out. I take her out for dinner. Um, if my girlfriend and I ended up in jail and I used a chisel to get through the bars, so I cut through the bars, I chiseled through the bars and we escaped, we broke out of jail. So we were in jail and we broke out of jail and we ran away, we ran off. Um, maybe we're trying to get into a bar. We get into a bar or a pub or a nightclub, my girlfriend and I, uh, we get really, really drunk, we make a lot of noise, um, and the bouncer decides to kick us out. So we were in and now he's kicking us out. He's booting us out. That's another way of saying to kick. He is throwing us out. He could turf us out. He could chuck us out, okay? So we can use any of those different um, verbs and then out because he's leaving that location, okay? If I wanted to clean my room, but clean it in a way that the room was going to empty. So imagine I'm moving out of my house, I'm moving out and I need to clean the room. So if I clean the room completely and there's no more stuff in the room, I'm cleaning the room out because I'm taking everything from in the room, so I'm cleaning the room out. Or I could say that I'm emptying everything out of the room. Does that make sense? All right. If something is really expensive and you want to buy it, so I've got my, my wallet here, okay? So I've got my wallet and the money that I have is in my wallet. If I want to pay for something, I have to take the money, obviously, out of my wallet. So we can use the phrasal verb to shell out, to lash out, and to fork out, meaning to pay for something. So this is a bit more slangy. You can use this anywhere in the English speaking world, but to shell out, and shell is spelt the same way as you would spell this, okay? This is a shell from the ocean. We would use that as a verb to mean to do this kind of movement with money. He's shelling out for a new car. He's lashing out for a ute. Um, he's forking out some money for a new house, okay? So to shell out, lash out, fork out. You can look out of something or you can look out for something. So if we look out, that is that we're looking outside of ourselves, okay? So you can say it as a warning, look out! But you can also say it where you're looking out of something. So we've got a window here. If I'm looking in the window, I'm looking into the house. If I'm in the house, looking out of the window, obviously, I'm looking out of the window, outside. But yeah, you can use it as a warning as well. Look out for the truck, as in watch out. Use your eyes outwards and be aware of everything around you. Two seconds, guys. I'm gonna turn it on because it's driving me nuts. 
two seconds. See, look at that. Now I'm gonna have to do all this editing. All right, all right, that should be better. That should be a little bit better light-wise. Can you hear me okay? Give me another thumbs up just so I can double check I've plugged it in and the sound is okay. Give me a thumbs up if you guys can hear me all right. Can you hear me? Burfi, Uger, thanks for joining today, guys. Can you give me a thumbs up? Show me that you guys can hear me okay. It's all good. The sound is okay. All right, let's get back into it. You can seek someone out, guys. So if you're searching for someone, you're seeking, you can seek them out by looking for them, okay? That's another one. Still on position and movement. If I have, I'm just gonna grab my magazine here. Another one for position and movement. If I'm choosing something, so imagine that I'm reading a magazine where I can buy a car. If I'm searching through the magazine, I'm seeking, I'm seeking a, a new car, I can pick the car out of the magazine. So the car is in the magazine, it's something that I want to choose. I could pick it, as in this movement, out of the magazine. So I'm going to pick out a new car. If something is incredibly obvious, so imagine that I guess I'm still looking at this magazine and there's this beautiful red Ferrari, it's standing out. So I'm looking at all these cars and I'm thinking, I want a car, what's the most obvious, most beautiful looking car? If it's a Ferrari, it's obvious, it's pretty obvious. And if it's red, it's really going to stand out, okay? So this one, when you say stand out, it's like you have a lot of different options, but one of them is really obvious, like it's standing out from the crowd, okay? Or from all the other options. So he stood out, he's really obvious, the car stood out. It's really obvious. Getting on to number two now, guys. Number two, to expand, okay? So the opposite of contract, which would be in, you contract in, you expand outwards or you expand out. Inwards, outwards, okay? You could tell someone to spread out or a group of people, spread out. I want you guys to expand, spread out. If there was a crowd of people that had all, the, the crowd had gathered in, and you wanted them to move out, you would say expand out, spread out, move out, outwards. You might tell some people to fan out. A fan is something that does that, right? And then you can, you know, if it's hot, you can fan yourself. If something fans out, it does this kind of movement, okay? It fans, turns into a fan, fans out. So you could say, all the soldiers here, can you guys fan out, spread out like that? If you were starting to put on weight, you can fill out. So you're starting to fill up your clothes, you're filling outwards because you're expanding. So she's starting to fill out. Maybe it's a pregnant woman. She's become pregnant, she's getting bigger, her belly's expanding, she's filling out her clothing. You can grow out of something. So if something is now too small for you because you've been growing, you're growing out of that thing, okay? So you used to be able to fit in your clothing, but now that you've grown, you've gotten too big, you're starting to poke out of your clothing, you're growing out of your clothing. You could tell someone who's come over to your house, they've come into your house, they've sat on your couch, you could tell them to stretch out, to spread out. You know, maybe it's a hot day and they, they feel really hot, so they might stretch out, they might spread out like this, okay? So expansion, guys, expansion. Number three, number three, guys, to distribute. Remember this, this sort of action outwards, to give something out. So if I was sending you guys letters for Aussie English, I could say that I'm sending out all of these letters. They're going out, they're expanding away from me, they're leaving me, they're going out. If I handed out business cards, you know, imagine that I have some Aussie English business cards here, though this isn't mine. If I'm giving them to people, I'm handing, because I'm using my hand, handing these business cards out. Someone could give them in to me and I could give them back out to other people. If I was playing a game of cards, I'm playing poker, I'm playing blackjack, I deal the cards 
out, okay? Because they're expanding away from me, they're being distributed, they're going out, they're being dealt out. And then afterwards, if we had to sort the, ca the cards out, we had to organize them outwards into say their different suits, we're separating the cards out, we're sorting the cards out. Maybe we could even say we're organizing them out into their different suits, okay? That was distribute, number three. Number four, to completely finish. So, I've got some shoes here and they're, they've got some holes in them, okay? They're starting to really wear out. So, they're being used up, they're being completely used, they're starting to wear, that's what this is, to wear, they're starting to wear out, okay? So, I'm running out of shoes. If my shoes all wore out, I've run out of shoes. I've exhausted all of my shoes. I've used up all of my shoes. I've run out of shoes. If I'm a coffee drinker, I'm a coffee drinker. I love coffee in the morning. My worst nightmare is waking up, going into the kitchen and seeing that there's no coffee beans left. They've been used up. They've run out. Okay? So, we ran out of coffee. You can fall out with someone though. So, to fall out with someone, I guess, is to completely finish with that person. So, you're no longer interested in a relationship with them. Friends can often have a falling out. So, that's where we can turn that into a noun, a falling out, because they have fallen out. So, to fall is to do this and I guess you use it as a way of saying they were in contact and now they're out of contact. They've fallen out of contact, okay? So, they fell out with one another. You can buy something out. So, I guess that is that you... That one's a weird one. Completely buy something, I guess. If someone has a business that you want to buy and they, they don't really want to sell but they have to for some reason or another, if you buy them out, it's that you've purchased their business. You've bought them out. Something can die out. So, if you die... If you die out, that is to go extinct. For a species of animal, for a species of organism to go extinct, they die out, okay? So, they completely die. They completely die. So, the dinosaurs died out a long time ago. They went extinct. We can figure something out. We can work something out. So, that is to completely learn something, to completely understand something, to completely discover something. We figure it out, we work it out. Um, how do we answer this sum, this math sum? I don't know, but we'll figure it out. I don't know, but we'll work it out. If we want to look up the answer, we might find out the answer to learn that information. We're going to find it out. We're going to completely find that information, we'll find it out. I guess you could think of it in the information is in something and you're going to find it out of that thing, right? So, there's a word in a dictionary and you want to find out what the meaning is, you have to look in the dictionary to find the meaning out, okay? Remember, in, out. The definition of a word is in a dictionary and you want to find it out. Ah, now I understand. You can rub something out. You can scratch something out. So, again, imagine that I have... I've written on a card here. If I have a rubber, so that's what this is at the tip here, that's a rubber. If I rub until the pencil is all gone, I've rubbed it out. It's no longer there, it's gone. I guess because I'm doing these actions and I'm spreading the stuff, the, the lead, the pencil that's on here, outwards, I'm rubbing it out. I could scratch it. If I use the tip of the pencil here to really scratch all of the writing that I just wrote down out, I can say scratch out. You can fill something out. So, again, imagine I have a form, okay? I have to put my information in the form. I have to put it on the form. Again, you just decide how you want to describe that. Is it in it? Is it on it? Um, and then, if you completely 
fill the form in, you filled the form out. That's a bit confusing, I know guys, it's just how we're thinking about it. Can you fill in this form? Yeah, I'll fill it in, as in I'll put my information in the form, in the boxes on the form, and then once I completely finish the form, I've, I've filled the form out. It's all finished, the whole thing, so I guess imagine it's like a circle here, and I'm filling the circle in with paint, or with pencil, you know, with color, the same thing with the form and your information, you're filling it out, so there's no gaps left. If I had a candle here, so I've got a candle, imagine that the candle was actually here on fire, I lit the candle, if I blow it out, so it's, I guess it's on or it's lit, if I blow it out though, that means the flame goes out, it blows out when I do that. So, a flame can go out, a fire can go out, a candle can go out, and you can blow it so that it goes out, and that's to blow it out. You can fight something out, or battle something out, so to fight something out is to kind of work out that problem by fighting until there's a solution. So, to completely fight until it's resolved, you fight it out, you battle it out, you work it out. Alright, number five, guys. To say something publicly. So the words, the words are in my mouth. They're in my mouth and I want to say them out. I scream them out. I call them out. I cry them out. I shout them out. Again, the verb is however you want to describe how that thing is happening. But out is because it's, it's doing this. It's coming outwards, right? It's coming out of my mouth. It's very easy to hear because it's out. So, you could call out in fear if something scared you. Ah! You've called out. That was the ah! <laughs> That's to call out. Um, you could scream out. I'm not going to do that. You could scream out. You could cry out. You could shout out. These are all synonyms. They mean the same thing. You could blurt something out. And we use blurt out for to say something you weren't meant to say. So, imagine I knew there was a secret about my mother that my father couldn't know. If I got drunk at dinner one night and then I just said the thing in front of my father, I have blurted it out, okay? It's just another synonym for saying something, speaking some words, you know, talking. I blurted out the secret, I blurted out the truth. The same thing to come out with something. Someone might say this to you when they want to know information. They want you to give them the information. They want the information to come out of you so that they can hear it, so they can find out the answer, the information. So they might say, come out with it. Come out with it. Tell us what happened. Come out with the secret. So she came out with the truth, as in the truth came out of her, she came out with the truth. You can speak out for something or against something, okay? So, you speak for the thing, you're for it, or you can speak out against the thing. I'm against it. So, she spoke out against domestic violence or domestic abuse. She spoke out against it. That means that she announced publicly. It's to kind of, to speak publicly, to make it known to everyone out there that this is her opinion, okay? Number six, okay, to leave. So, to like exit. Again, it's this idea. You go into a place, you enter a place, you come out of a place, you exit a place. Okay, so you, if someone walked in right now in the middle of this lesson, I would tell them to get out, go out, leave, exit, get out. Um, if I was moving out of this house, I could say, yeah, I'm going to move out next week. So, I'm leaving this location. If I was to move in, that is to enter this location. If I'm going to leave this location, that's to move out. So, I'm going to move out next week. You can walk out on someone. This is to leave unexpectedly. Usually something that happens with partners, so your husband could walk out on you, your wife could walk out on you, your father could walk out on you. And remember, we use on to attribute the fact that it's happening to you. 
someone's doing something plus out on you, okay? So my dad walked out on us when we were only kids. That means he left unexpectedly and never came back. He walked out on us. Number seven, guys, some of the miscellaneous ones. Okay, if you're doing something that's really annoying, someone might tell you, cut it out. You need to stop that. I want you to cut it out. And we went over this recently with knock it off. Those two are similar to one another. Knock it off. Knock as in to accidentally hit something. Knock it off is a way of saying stop it. The same as cut it out is the way of saying stop it. I want you to stop that. Cut it out. Cut it out. So the teacher told the student to cut it out. You need to stop it. You can pay someone out. This one is funny and I couldn't place it, right? Because to pay someone is obviously to pull money out and pay someone, I'm paying you. But if you pay someone out, that is to tease someone, to make fun of someone. So, ha ha ha, you have no hair, you've got no beard, you're, you look really funny. That's to pay someone out. I'm paying them out. I think that's quite Australian. You might not hear that overseas, I definitely heard that all the time at school when kids were making fun of other kids, when they were teasing other kids, they were paying those kids out. So he paid his friend out in class. You can try out or you can try out for something. So I want to audition for a music, a musical or a maybe a theater production or even a soccer team. I want to play on a soccer team. To do so, I have to try out for the theatre production. I have to try out for the soccer team. I have to try out for the um, musical. So it's to audition for something. I'm trying myself out, okay? To freak out or to flip out. Again, I couldn't place this one. I didn't know where to put it with regards to the other categories. If you freak out, it's that you go crazy. Like, oh, I'm scared. I could be <gasps> horrified of something or I could be really angry or I could be really worried. Like, oh, what do we do? If I do that, I'm freaking out or I'm flipping out. To flip is to do this, to go over and over and over. That's to flip. But if someone flips out, it's kind of like they're going so crazy from being scared, from being worried, from being... Um, angry that they're doing flips, they're flipping out, they're freaking out. You can trip out. To trip is like if you're walking along and your foot hits something and you fall. That's to trip, to trip over, to trip on something, to fall over. Um, but if you trip out, that is used when people are using psychedelic drugs, when they're hallucinating. So they're seeing weird things. Whoa, man, I'm tripping out. They, they would use the phrasal verb to trip out, okay? And so that would be like if you took acid or you did the drug like DMT, any of those drugs that cause you to hallucinate and see things, you're tripping out. So you'll always see this in films. Whoa, man, he's tripping out. He's tripping out. You can make something out and that's kind of like discern something. So if I had, I guess... I guess, if, you know, these, these postcards on the wall behind me, if you can only just see them and see that, say, this guy is a man, you can only just make out that he's a man. So you can only just see, oh, yeah, okay, that's a guy. That little dude there, that's a man. I can make it out, but only just to make out, okay? To make it out is to kind of discern what it is. Oh, I can see it. But we can make out with a person, and that is to kiss, you know, and usually ongoing. So you're not just, but this is the kind of kissing, you know, full on stuff. That is to make out with a person. So she made out with her boyfriend. You can pig out. To pig out is to eat a lot. Like to eat like a pig, to pig out. And you'd pig out on something. So if I had my dinner, it arrived, we wanted to eat out, but we decided to eat in. The takeaways come to my house, I've brought it inside. If I pig out, it's that I eat it really quickly, like a pig, I'm pigging out on the food. 
things can turn out a certain way. Okay, again, couldn't work out where to put this one because obviously to turn is to do this or this. If something turns out to be a certain way, it's that it ends up being a certain way. It happens to be that way. It eventuates like that. So, I met this guy and he turned out to be the President of the United States or he turned out to be a great guy. If this lesson goes really well, this lesson turned out great. That's it guys. Let's go through a few expressions and then we'll finish up. Okay, so the very first one is to come out of the closet. Okay, so a closet is something that has doors like this in your room. You put your clothes in the closet. You take your clothes out if you want to put your clothes on. If someone comes out of the closet, this is an expression for someone to say, to publicly announce that they are gay, that they're homosexual. Okay, and it's a, a polite way of saying that they have come out of the closet they have made it known that they are gay, okay? So, you'll refer to someone as being in the closet or coming out of the closet. To blow something out of proportion. So, proportion is kind of like, that's a difficult one to explain off the top of my head. The proportion of this pencil is changing, right? So, it's big here and the proportion is small back here. Um, but if we blow something, to blow it is for it to expand like that, like blowing a balloon and the balloon blows up. If we blow something out of proportion, it's that we've exaggerated it. It's not as bad as it, it seems, okay? So, imagine that I had a pimple on my face. I had a pimple and I thought, it's the worst thing ever. Now, I am the ugliest person in the world. Someone could say to me, dude, you've blown that out of proportion. It's not that big of a deal. It's not a problem. You blew it out of proportion. You can break out in something. To break out in a thing is to break out. It's to develop that thing. So, I could break out in tears if I started to cry. I could break out in a cold sweat, which is when you get sick and you start to sweat. You know, you get water on your body. If it starts to happen all over your body, it's breaking out. If I get a rash on my body, so everything starts getting red, I have an allergic reaction, I'm breaking out in a rash. And if I started getting pimples all over my face, I'm breaking out. So, the, the thing is going like this all over my body, you know, it started in one place and now it's going everywhere. I'm breaking out in pimples, okay? You can come out ahead. To come out ahead, ahead is in front of someone. So, imagine you are racing and there's a whole bunch of people. All my fingers here are people in a race. If you come out ahead, it's that all these people are running and you do this. So, you end up leading in a competition. He came out ahead. The footy team ended, out, ended up coming out ahead this year on the ladder. So, the ladders, the rankings, the footy team came out, woo, came out ahead, ahead of everyone else. The footy team came out ahead. You can tell someone to eat their heart out. So, that would be like, and I have no spoon here, if I had a spoon or a fork and I could literally eat into my chest and eat my own heart, obviously, that would be incredibly unpleasant as an experience. But you can tell someone sarcastically, as a joke, not seriously, you can tell them, eat your heart out. And this is usually a way of saying, experience severe grief. So, you'll say this to someone when they're jealous of something. So, if I just bought, I picked out, I chose the Ferrari that I wanted to buy, a brand new car, I bought the Ferrari and I see someone who's incredibly jealous, I could say, this is my new Ferrari. Eat your heart out. Eat your heart out. Experience severe grief. Be jealous, okay? Eat your heart out. You can feel out of place, okay? To feel, mm, a sensation to feel out of place. If you're out of place, you don't fit. So, you don't fit in, you feel out of place. So, if everything fits in, you know, imagine these are all, I don't know, things that are the same. If something sticks out like this, it's incredibly obvious. It shouldn't be there, so you might feel out of place. So, if I went back to high school right now 
as a 30 year old man, I would feel out of place because I'm older than everyone. I'm different. I'm bald. You know, I'm, I'm old. I feel like this is inappropriate. I feel out of place. So the weird paintings in this museum felt a little out of place. They didn't match it. They didn't feel right. You can tell someone that they got out of the wrong side of bed. Okay, imagine you've got a bed here. You get in bed when you go into the bed to sleep. And in the morning you wake up and you get out of bed. If you say to someone, did you get out of the wrong side of bed today? That is suggesting the person's in a very bad mood. They're not in a happy mood. They're in a bad mood. They're angry. They're upset. They're emotional. Did you get out of the wrong side of bed? Yeah, I got out of the wrong side of bed. Okay, so she clearly got out of the wrong side of bed this morning because she was upset and angry. Something can go in one ear and out the other. And that is when you've said information to someone and it literally just... It's like it doesn't go into their brain. They don't learn that information. They instantly forget it or they just don't absorb it. It doesn't go in and stay in. It goes in one ear and out the other because they've heard that information and then it's just gone out and disappeared, okay? So the information went in one ear and out the other. That's a really good expression. And the very last one, guys, the very last one is to let the cat, meow, to let the cat, out of the bag. So imagine this is a bag, a sack, the cat's in the bag and you release it by opening the bag and the cat comes out. The cat comes out of the bag. If you let the cat out of the bag, it is to reveal a secret, to disclose a secret, to say something um, that was meant to be kept secret. So he let the cat out of the bag and told her the secret. So that's it guys. Remember to go back, practice this episode, listen to it a few times. The phrasal verbs that form without can mean outside of as opposed to inside of. So to move out instead of come in. It can mean to expand. It can mean to distribute. It can mean to completely finish or to be completely used. It can be that you've said something publicly and it can be that you leave, that you exit, okay? So with that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. (laughs) Good job, guys. Good job. Rosa Bell, Smitter, how's it going? Thank you so much for coming, guys. Remember, if you want to sign up and get all the paid side of this course, you'll get a transcript, guys, of every single word that I say, every single phrasal verb that I use in that entire 40 minutes will be discussed, it'll be highlighted, it'll be defined, and then there'll be an example sentence below so that you can learn these by heart, you can learn to use them effortlessly. You're gonna get a video, guys, with a slideshow. Hopefully, this is the slideshow that I'm reading off. And it's got images for all of these phrasal verbs with example sentences, everything's written out in a beautiful manner. And then you'll see this video up in the corner like that so that you can watch me do all of my gestures at the same time as read the example sentences and the phrasal verbs that I'm using. So if you want to sign up for that, the link is in the description, guys, and you can save $13 when you sign up. So get in there and give it a go and learn to use phrasal verbs effortlessly, guys. Give it a go. Remember, If you want to send me a postcard, you can do that. The address will be in the transcript or it'll be uh, listed somewhere. PO Box 597 Ocean Grove 3226 Victoria, Australia. Remember, I want to fill this wall up, guys. So get on it and help me do this. I want to see where the craziest place is that I can receive a postcard from. And aside from that, I'm working on the Aussie English Classroom at the moment, guys, if you want to sign up and give it a go, it's just one dollar, a single dollar, one buck, okay? Well, I've got one here. This, for the first month, guys, this this dollar with kangaroos on it, one of these for 30 days access to the Aussie English classroom. You get to treat every lesson now like a course. You get points, you earn badges, you can interact with other members. 
You can chat to me on there. We can add people as friends. We can discuss the lessons and there's quizzes that you get marked on. So get in there. The whole idea is to help you learn English, but Aussie English first and foremost and to do so in a fun manner. Okay, so get in there and give it a go. It's a single dollar. You can cancel at any time. I just want you to get in there and enjoy learning Australian English. Anyway, guys, I've ranted too much. I want to let you guys go and enjoy your Monday night. Thank you so much as usual and I'll see you next Monday at 7 p.m. Melbourne time. Peace out, guys.